Hello and welcome to Tripod, the audio advertising podcast. I'm Matt Hopper, co-founder of audio agency Trisonic. We're a little way through season one on audio creative and the next episode's out next week. But today we're bringing you a bonus episode about audience figures for radio and audio in the UK because the latest Rajar survey has just been published. I'm joined by my co-founder, Howard Barham, our media director. Howard, you've been buying radio and audio for over 25 years, if I may say uh, so. Uh, you, you must have seen around 100 Rajar surveys. How does this one rate? Matt, I can't believe you have said that 100 Rajar surveys, and that's the, that's 100 mornings of getting up slightly earlier than I probably uh, uh, would do. I mean, there are some aficionados that will get up at three or four in the morning to do a radio release, but I actually got up at six o'clock, so I had a lie in, and as you can tell, I do need my um, beauty sleep. And folks, just to just to mark your guard, the radio results are released to the stations and the press on the Wednesday, and they're embargoed till midnight. So when I got up at six o'clock, turn the computer on, I can then start taking a look at the results. And I guess, I mean, you know, we've seen for the three, well, the last seven years or so, that the commercial radio uh, sector uh, has been increasing. And this radio release is no different. So overall, uh, it's great news for advertisers because all stations are up. You, all stations ebb and flow, but the majority of stations are up in this radio period. And overall, commercial radio now reaches almost 40 million people a week. It, the figure stands at 39.2. And as I say, it's been increasing uh, exponentially since probably the start of 2017 versus the BBC. So the BBC uh, obviously has lost some talent to commercial radio. Uh, figures have been poached, such as Ken Bruce, which we're going to talk about in a minute, and stars like um, uh, Chris Evans, who joined Virgin Radio. So the BBC reaches 31 million. So commercial radio is about 9 million ahead of that. Uh, and as I say, that gap started in 2017. And this investment has been in marketing uh, and employment of new talent. So a lot of station groups you will hear, if you listen to things like stations like Heart or Magic, are running, you know, if you don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, money giveaways, which have been around for donkey's years. But it's always been a mechanism to uh, entice listeners and retain yeah. listeners because it's important. Holidays, cars and money, they used to say. Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it. I mean, that, and that's the name of the game. And that's what these stations are doing because it's fine generating listeners to sam sample the station, but you have to hold on to them. Hence, these competitions. I mean, it's not the be-all end of these things, but it, hence the competitions last for, for weeks or months, your chance to, to win. But I guess they cover their cost because it's like a £2 tech century or £3 tech century. It's like you see, like you see on television, basically. But, you know, it's a way of of getting listeners to sample the station plus other marketing activities and you have to congratulate the commercial sector it's easy here to talk about it but they've actually done it and they've put their money where their mouth is but they've actually got the right plans in place and it and success seems to be non-stop at the moment um and i guess mentioning ken bruce part of this strategy has always been to, or has now been to try and entice bbc stars and he's one of them and he works for uh, the media group radio group bauer and he's on their network of stations called Greatest Hits Radio, which I guess is playing a sort of, you know, a 35, 40 plus mix of music, hence Ken Bruce, came from BBC Radio 2. And his show is a mid-morning show, uh, now reaches, to sort of overlay the figures here for our listeners and viewers, but he reaches 3.7 million uh, listeners a week for his show, the mid-morning show across the Greatest Hits Radio network which is up a whopping 124% year on year. So these are all new figures. He's joined, but he's turning the dial. And as we've said before, it's important that it's fine making the investment, putting the dollars in, taking out the bank account, but you've got to put money back into the bank account. And that is and that is the trick here for, for the industry sales teams and to try and entice and attract new advertisers to the medium but also get existing advertisers to spend spend more money. But overall, it's great news for whatever size of advertiser you are, because while we're talking about sort of big network shows like, you know, the, the, the Ken Bruce show or, or the networks of heart, these stations are all available you know, nationally as a group of stations to cover the whole of the United Kingdom, but also to cover regions and also locally. So the benefit really is that you're, you're for advertisers and listeners alike, 
you are getting this investments coming in, creating great programming and great advertising opportunities. And it's all quality and um, and listeners are lapping it up. And the other area where I guess where there's been growth is that new stations being developed all the time, but the FM frequency is full. So this is where uh, the new stations are being developed across you know digital platforms. So radio station apps like the Global Player, where you can access their podcasts, you can access uh, radio shows, extra content for signing up. And as these listeners are signing up, obviously, if you sign up, you have to give some data to, to, to the radio stations. So we know more about them. And these listeners are uh, can be targeted uh, either nationally, locally, regionally. And interestingly, on that digital line, what we have seen for the first time uh, is, is growth of listening to radio stations via digital television, so DTV it's called. So that is either listening to hybrid stations, I guess, like GB News, uh, Talk Radio, Talk TV, which are sort of simulcasting um, what they're showing on the television and on the radio. GB News does that permanently, whereas Talk Radio is slightly more of a hybrid because it, has, it started as a radio station, Talk Radio, and they still have that as a brand and they have bespoke radio shows, but you can it's the same output. And I guess the other... Which is which is interesting because DTV listenership has been has been flat. So it's interesting to see that that is part of a, a growth area within that digital sphere. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people I know, uh, anecdotally anyway, that a lot of people listen to their radio on the same device that they watch their TV. They have a sound bar on the TV. That's the way they listen to their radio. So that, I guess, would count as DTV listening. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. 100%. And and I think, you know, smart speakers have been, you know, taken the column inches, I guess, in terms of, you know, how you can, how people are using smart speakers and the different sort of dynamic campaigns you can run on smart speakers to make them more interactive. So you can ask the smart speaker, I'm not going to say the name because it's going to turn the bloody thing on, but you can ask the smart speaker to have an advertiser, can you give me more information or request yeah. a brochure or whatever? And that's, and that, and that will grow because it's more, it's more interactive, I guess, and it's exciting for advertisers and it's a new way of reaching consumers you know, and, and interacting with the consumer, sort of two-way conversation. But smart speaker listening is actually flat in this um, in this radar. But I wouldn't read too much, like all these things, a radar is a quarter, it's a quarter's listening. If you're going to give, you know, stations or, or tr- you need to look at the trends and you need to do that probably over 12 to 18 months. I mean, people get very excited about, you know, that they've got m- more listeners last week than this week. But you really have to look at, a period of 12 to 18 months in my 100 rage hours experience matt that's what i would that's what that's what i would that's what i would yeah. say because i've been doing yeah. it as you say for a long time and it's the it's the it's the trend that counts so overall um it, maybe this is my 101st rager i don't know i'm not counting so 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 <laughs> so precisely but you know it's another good showing from commercial radio the success continues and you know digital listening's growing there's great formats for advertisers. There's great ways of engaging, uh, different ways of engaging with the listeners through these digital applications such as smart speakers. And, you know, I'll be getting up early on Thursday, the 1st of um, February in 2024, because, folks, that's when we're going to be back with another bonus Rajar episode. Well, thank you, Howard. Howard Barham, uh, co-founder and media director of Trisonic. We hope you found this episode of Tripod useful. If you've got any questions or comments, please get in touch with us at trisonic.co.uk. Please follow or subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And a rating and review would be great if you have time. Next Thursday, we're back to our bite-sized episodes on creative best practice. What you ask your listener to do in an ad can make or break an audio campaign. So next week, we're talking about how to get call to action right. Until then, goodbye.